If your goal is to build an impressive set of pecs resembling those of Arnold in the famous Pumping Iron documentary, yet you're limited by time or equipment, then listen up. Because in this video, I'll be sharing the only three dumbbell chest exercises you need to help you achieve big and powerful pecs worthy of envy every time you walk in the gym. But before we get into the video, I have a small favor to ask from you. In the last 28 days, over 85% of the people who watch this channel didn't subscribe. My goal is to get that down to 50%. And while it's not going to be easy, I do believe that with your help, we'll have no problem reaching that goal. So if you've ever liked any of the videos we've posted on the channel, or if any of the tips we've shared have ever helped you get closer to achieving your fitness goals, all we ask is that you click the subscribe button as it'll truly help us continue to grow and improve the quality of the videos. With that out of the way, grab your dumbbells and let's get started. In order to maximize chest training, you must first understand the anatomy of the chest. The chest, specifically the pectoralis major, is divided into two heads, the upper clavicular and the lower sternal head. And if you look in certain textbooks, you'll see the lowest portion of the pecs is divided into a third head, the abdominal head. While they all have different origins, the clavicle, sternum, and costal ribs respectively, they all attach to the humerus, putting them in charge of a wide range of movements of the upper arm. Now that we understand the basic anatomy, let's discuss the function of each area of the chest. The regional anatomy of the pectoralis major presents an interesting feature in the orientation of its muscle fibers. It varies greatly depending on the region being analyzed. The uppermost region has fibers that are angled downwards. The middle region has fibers that are oriented horizontally towards the shoulder. And the lowest region comprises fibers that are almost vertical. This feature is further accentuated by the tendons that twist, causing the lowest regions to attach highest on the upper arm and the highest regions to attach lowest. Thus, we can presume that each area of the chest can be more easily engaged when you generate force in line with the muscle's line of pull, aka the orientation of the muscle fibers. Therefore, each chest region can play a more significant role in some joint actions and a lesser role in others. This would be in accordance with the principle of neuromechanical matching. To summarize the idea, regions of a muscle that grow the most in response to a single exercise probably contain muscle fibers that are positioned to be more mechanically advantageous during the execution of that exercise. This also explains how regional hypertrophy, different rates of muscle growth in different areas of a single muscle, happens. Thus, this also explains why the clavicular region has good leverage for shoulder flexion or bringing your arm upward, the sternal region has the greatest leverage as a shoulder adductor or bringing the arm toward the midline of the body, and the abdominal head has good leverage for shoulder extension, which would be bringing the arm down and back past the torso. So, now that we have a better understanding of the muscles involved and their functions, let's go over the only three dumbbell exercises you need to hit every area of the chest maximally. The first chest exercise you must have in your arsenal is a primary pushing movement. For this, I recommend the dumbbell bench press. When it comes to building a strong and impressive chest, a compound lift is essential. The dumbbell bench press is a multi-joint exercise that works multiple muscle groups simultaneously. This includes the triceps and shoulders, but with the chest as the primary mover. This makes the exercise a highly effective way to build strength and size in the chest muscles since it allows you to lift heavy, therefore allowing you to achieve maximum motor unit recruitment in just a few reps, which makes it easier to create a growth stimulus. Not only that, but it lends itself well to progressive overload, allowing you to continuously increase the weight you lift over time. Time. Thus, the dumbbell bench press is an excellent compound exercise that should be the focal point of your chest training. 
The chest's primary function is to bring the upper arm across the body, and this exercise targets this function well. As far as the science is concerned, one study comparing chest muscle activation in five bench angles found that the middle and lower pecs showed the highest EMG activity at a zero degree bench inclination. Another study found that a horizontal bench press resulted in more complete activation of all the regions of the pecs compared to decline and incline bench press angles. Therefore, utilizing a flat dumbbell bench press is an effective way of achieving major pec development. If it's your upper chest that's lagging behind, perform this exercise at a 30 degree incline. This is enough to involve more of the clavicular head while still providing a great stimulus to the lower regions. As you can see, alternating between a flat and slight incline on the bench press in and of itself can be sufficient for complete chest development. Finally, using dumbbells for the bench press allows you to have the freedom to adjust your arm path, upper arm orientation, and degrees of abduction and adduction to emphasize the pecs more. Exercise number two, dumbbell floor flies. When it comes to stretching and feeling the chest muscles, variations that involve peak forces with the hands further away from one another, such as dumbbell flies, are considered the best. But why do them on the floor? It would take very little effort to go on YouTube or Google and find that the main reason why modern gurus tell you to stay away from dumbbell flies has nothing to do with their effectiveness and everything to do with their risk for injury. So I recommend dumbbell floor flies because it provides you a safety net for how deep you should stretch the pecs and the surrounding connective tissues in the shoulder joint. Performing flies on the floor helps you avoid unnecessary injury injuries caused by going too deep as it can lead to anterior humeral glide resulting in chronic shoulder and elbow pain. Next, it's important to understand that muscles manage joint torque for growth. And one of the ways to increase that torque is to increase the external moment arm. The further the line of force of the weight is from the joint, the bigger the moment arm becomes. Basically, the more your elbows are extended while performing the fly, the more tension is experienced by the muscle fibers. One study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research suggests that a more extended elbow leads to greater sternocostal pec muscle activation compared to more flexed positions. So you increase mechanical tension and therefore muscle growth by keeping your elbows more extended than flexed. This makes floor flies an excellent overall chest builder without having to go heavy. As a final tip for performing flies, think of bringing your biceps together as you bring the dumbbells up. This lets you feel the muscle fibers contracting and allows the muscle fibers to shorten even further. Exercise number three, dumbbell pullovers. According to one study published in the Journal of Physical Education and Sport, EMG activity during resistance training showed greater activation of the pectoralis major during pullover exercises compared to the lats and triceps. And when performing single joint shoulder extension exercises, the lower region of the chest provides the most significant contribution at high degrees of shoulder flexion. Therefore, working in a partial range of motion close to the stretch position in the pullover exercise is most effective for the lower chest. For best results with this exercise, don't bring the dumbbell over your chest. Instead, keep it just above your head for maximum tension. And if you plan to go heavy, I recommend having your torso perpendicular to the bench so you can drop your hips to counterbalance the weight of the dumbbell. So there you have it, the only three dumbbell chest exercises you need for total chest development. Whether you're working out with limited equipment or simply want to switch things up, these movements are sure to target your pecs effectively. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're enjoying the content and want to support the channel, all we ask is that you subscribe for more videos and turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.